Click the links for Odyssey Bitch to support me on coffee or join the channel, get an icon and a wrench. Won't that be exciting? So Dungeons and Dragons is istophobic again. Um, this Dungeons and Dragons thing, the state approved good versus wrong thing, this is fascinating because it pretty clearly shows the slow globalist corrosion of storytelling. If you control the narrative, you're in a much better position to brainwash the cattle. Much of fantasy storytelling is actually about nationalism versus the evils of globalism because it has that core bit of realism in it that the other is malevolent in the sense that it's an eat or be eaten world in terms of countries. Fierce tribalism is what makes great things, people, and nations. If the alien comes into the tribe, they don't come to benefit you, not usually. They come to conquer or to exploit and act like uh, hemoglobin-sucking insects that live off the spirit of the nation, which is enough to get demonetized. So join the channel and get an icon. A lot of older fantasy tells simple stories well, where modern fantasy overwrites stories way, way overwrite stories. Like much, Many most modern fantasy books could be cut and edited in half. And they use magic to be their deuce ex machina, where the best magical fantasy stories keep the magic to a minimum. It's more like they, they don't have the wizards doing much. It's more that the land is magic. They make a dragon with the mass of a SUV, and they make it fly, but they skip the details, which is very important because you can't explain the unexplainable. And then once you explain the logic of it, you're tied to that logic. It's like in uh, E.T. Um, I think at the end of it, they're in the bicycle and they fly. So then uh, the little kid just sees that and doesn't think anything of, of it. And then the adult looks at it and goes, wait a minute. wait! If this guy could fly, then where were there earlier parts in the stories where they could have done that? Or Star Wars when they, they do the light speed trick. You're like, wait a minute. You could have done this the whole time. You can build like hypersonic or hypersonic sound in space, uh, hyper luminal missiles. Uh, why weren't you doing this before? It's like that, that blows the story out of the water, which is why, um, why things like that are usually edited out. But for some reason, Disney, it doesn't have an editor. I don't know how that works. Um, which, you know, the mistake they made in Disney star Wars versus the old stuff, the original skipped the science and engineering of spacecraft and, uh, space flight because it wasn't important to the story. The story was about good versus evil and redemption, human relationships, a little bit of romance. And to some extent, uh, tribalism, you had Luke Skywalker, who's going to save his father or die trying. Of course, in the Disney globalist abomination, you had the power of diversity versus a unified group. Globalism versus nationalism. But really, really, the Disney films were such a convoluted mess. They didn't really make their intended point just because they were so bad. They were all over the map. All people remember is a pretty horse-faced girl who came from a desert, became a purse puppy, then returned to the desert, single and childless, which is what globalists want women who look like her to uh, to stay. They want them to busy when they're young, so that they're, they're too old to have kids. Take a look at women's magazines, uh, websites, and who the writers and publishers are. If they're not of your tribe, then disregard them. The things they write are to further an agenda that is adverse to your interests, which is putting it mildly, but is acceptable to the filters. They are bad people who want you gone. This isn't um, me tinfoil hatting. They openly publish their desires to replace you. From this mortal coil, you can search their social media and uh, it will tell you everything. You can search verified hate on uh, DuckDuckGo. Yes, even 77 Star Wars was woke, but it was still a good, simple story. And hey, you can watch it now and you can root for Darth Vader and the Empire. Maybe Luke and Vader should have deleted the Emperor and ruled together. Hashtag Vader did nothing wrong. When SJW kids say that they love, love, love these types of films, ask them to name their favorite scene in Ghostbusters 2016. One, they don't have any. Two, if they do, it will be so stupid and you can humiliate them, which you should. You should humiliate them as often as possible. 
Remember in Ghostbusters when they had to walk up the stairs with the proton packs and they're just totally exhausted because they're not in the best of shape. They're just average schlubs or academic types. Or when they're on the elevator and they try to get away from the humming proton pack, um, their fear and their absurd response made for a humor, humorous scene. It's like trying to get away from um, a kilo of plutonium that is about to go critical. Uh, a foot away is not going to make a difference. So, pray tell, what was funny about Ghostbusters 2016? Was it the vaginal queef? The fat ladies doing fat lady comedy? The developmentally disabled Thor guy? I don't know his name. You know, what would have been funny is if the four girls were sort of the in, incompetent comic relief and the Thor guy was the intelligent one behind the scenes, always kind of saving their butts. That would have been an improvement, which isn't saying much, because anything would have been an improvement. If the woke films are so good, why don't people rewatch them? Because if you see a woke film once is is painful enough, you don't want to rewatch any Disney Star Wars films or a lot of films lately. Uh, how many people are rewatching Captain Marvel or uh, the last uh, Terminator, uh, Charlie's Angels? Uh, the last X-Men movie. Try getting through those movies just once. And I mean paying attention, not with your phone in your hand distracting. Like, watch the whole thing. It would be a punishment. It sounds like I got distracted. I didn't, so maybe I did. But post-2020 Bolshevik Boogaloo, anything that has to put pass through the hands of the gatekeepers is going to be absolute garbage. Keep in mind, 90% of apps go through Google or Apple. Back in my day, we had to get software from known websites. We downloaded it, virus scanned it, and spyware checked it, and then we ran it ourselves. It wasn't that hard. If you have to get the approval of Apple or Google, then your software is going to be as edgy as butter. And slowly, they're just going to... Um, control the narrative by controlling 90% of the apps. If they don't like what you're doing, like if you're basically, if you're um, like Gab is not on uh, the app store, which is how you know Gab's the real deal where uh, the others parlor and getter and all these other sites, if they're uh, allowed on the app store, then they're garbage. So you can just, you can consider them controlled ops. Not, not so much their controlled ops, but their narrative is controlled by Google and Apple where Gab's isn't, which is why Gab is the only social media network that is going to matter in the coming years people have to get used to bypassing um, the app stores and just using trusted third parties everything is going to be pro-globalism and anti-nationalism except for israel japan south korea china only the west must destroy themselves they turn the term nationalism into something evil they control the media, they control the narrative. They have the power to convince the people to the left of the bell curve what to get mad at, when to go loot and riot, because the media holds the useful idiots in the palm of their hand. Anyway, what they do to fantasy stories is some nerd, usually, <laughs> I'm not a nerd, usually an Englishman creates something. It's an organic story, a good nationalist versus the alien horde. It makes sense because it has some historical basis. Mixing is usually bad in like 90% of cases. You're always going to destroy the less aggressive tribe, which is a problem because the less aggressive, more civilized one is the smarter one, but they civilize themselves to death. They allowed globalists to set the narrative. That's the beginning of the end right there. They should never have been allowed in the first place. As soon as you see a liar warm tongue, they must be trebucheted into the next country. Fantasy has to simplify things to make the story flow. It's also easier visually to make men of one tribe and like the orcs very visually distinct. The orcs are twisted and ugly. They're the bad guys. That part of the story is pretty simple. Yeah, you could tell a story of the North English or I mean people who look like that uh, fighting the South English or Vikings. But it's easier to make the bad guys something that represents a bigger otherness of evil. Post-2020, globalists control the narrative. They are winning because they control the payment processors, banks, Hollywood, media, schools, Biden's executive branch. And they have decided that now is the time to take off the mask. 
So the stories that you're going to get are mammary gland deficient WOCs as the lead and Austrian Chad stand-ins as the antagonists. But on our side, we have social media to belittle these people of soy, these Kevin Smiths of the world, or J.J. Abrams, or who's the other guy, Rian uh, Johnson. If something looks woke, we can mock it the way it deserves, which is why alt social media scares the hell out of them. Remember the Sonic um, art, art redo? The Twitter commie kids were outraged that the customers complained and got what they wanted. It actually made them mad because they know on average that they control most of Hollywood, that type of stuff. So when they saw that a group of normies could exert influence, they panicked. They view it as losing control of the narrative, which is definitely true. Which is why they had to get control so they can deplatform. They have bad ideas that don't stand up to scrutiny. You simply examine one of their ideas and say, Where has this worked before? Where has it failed? Is it in accord with human behavior or even with reality? Who is behind it? What is their bias? They fall apart pretty quickly. It, it would be like if you could get them on cross-examination. Everything they do with fictional stories is going to be a reflection of their worldview. And I know I harp on, I grind the axe about globalism versus nationalism, but it is so deeply rooted in stories and the concept of human storytelling of the tribe around the fire. And it's a hard binary. If the story is going to touch on these topics at all, and they don't all have to, there's ways to get around it. Um, they're going to pick a side and, don't get me wrong, a nuanced story could be told, but the odds are that it won't get the chance. It's uh, If you want to get around that um, the tribalism thing, you just uh, have them fight space aliens or something, and then you can have like all of Earthlings come together. You, you could have them come together to fight the space aliens, and it would kind of work out. But um, those aren't, like, Lord of the Rings stories are kind of more down-to-earth in terms of analogy, metaphor, and simile, where space aliens, mm, not so much. Uh, less. They're a little bit further out on the spectrum. It's not the writer's fault. It's the publishers. They are, and most every award for writing, uh, like Hugo Awards, if you want to look at who those Hugo Award people are, they are alt-left extremists. If you came out with something like Lord of the Rings today, they just wouldn't allow it to be published anywhere, and you wouldn't be able to crowdfund it. They would examine your social media, your your legal history, any public records with a fine-tooth comb to destroy you. Because really, you're always going to find something, something that paints you in a bad light. And finally, they can just start the rumor mill on social media, the Whisper Network. Matt Damon is their guy. He got GLAAD awards and worked with the GLAAD folks. And they're trying to get the snowball rolling to cancel him. Which actually is its own video. It's fascinating. They don't want discourse. They want to rule through fear. Which is... There's another thing. It's got some hot words in it. Because it involves the Kathleen Kennedy Club. The guy... There's this guy who talks to people who are in that in that group. And he um, he just talks to a black guy. And he, he gets, slowly gets them out of it. Which I'm not saying is good or bad. I'm sure the group is great. But that concept of open discourse and moving on from one's prior beliefs to a new belief system um, is something the left is terrified of. They do not want to uncancel people. They want they want because they want to rule through fear and intimidation, not through discourse and logic and reason. So that's another video. Anyway, join the channel uh, or go to Odyssey and BitChute and subscribe there. And I will see you guys all next episode.